Welcome to the Android Guys In Brief uh, Podcast, the 15-minute tech news podcast that never lasts for just 15 minutes. Today is August 23rd, 2018, and my name is Donovan Jesko, an editor here at Android Guys. Joining me today, we have writers Kian and Josh. How are you guys doing today? Well, good. Glad to hear it. Well, we have a bit of a slow news day today, but there's a couple interesting topics. Uh, the Note 9 launches tomorrow from Samsung. Um, what do you guys think, Josh? Um, so I actually got the phone yesterday, and so I spent a good 24 hours with it. Nice. Um, and, yeah, it, it's, it's pretty rad. I mean, it's it's beastly. It's really fast. Um, and the battery life, I think that's uh, one of the biggest upgrades from the the last Note 8 that, that really makes a difference. Like, the rest is iterative. It does feel like a Note 8 in hand. Um, the battery life is the biggest uh it's the biggest upgrade, and like, like I've been using it all day. I'm at fifty four percent right now, so I mean, yeah, it's, it's almost it's almost a two dayer. Yeah, so I guess, I guess that liquid cooling actually has some some benefit then. Yeah, I I still feel some heat come out. Um, maybe it disperses the heat better. I I don't know how much it really affects it. It's kind of hard to tell without without the liquid cooling, you know, to compare yeah. it to. Um, is is I mean you said it was pretty red. Is it a thousand dollars red? I, I think it's worth. I mean it's it, it has like pretty much like everything we would dream like our our perfect phone. Like if we were to imagine what a perfect phone would be a couple years ago. I mean I, there's like I, I can't imagine like what more at this point. Like I would want even less bezel. You know like the old bezel list. But I mean it's pretty darn close. It doesn't have a notch if that bugs you and I mean, this the screen's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, the camera's quick. Like I came from the the LG G7, and um, and this one just flies compared to it. Not that the G7 was like a slug or anything, but I mean, there is a noticeable difference. But it is only the 24-hour impression, and you know, <laughs> sometimes with these heavy UIs, you know, things can slow down over time. So, stay tuned for our review on that. Yeah, that, that's going to be. <laughs> that's going to be our, our subtitle for the uh for the review it's the perfect phone from two years ago <laughs> <laughs> um so in addition to the note launch coming out tomorrow but apparently also today uh we have a, a leak from the uh, lg side of things for the v40 which is apparently going to come with five cameras um that's three on the back two on the front a uh, dedicated google assistant button like the g7 um, what do you guys think of this? Kian, why don't you want to start us off? As a photographer, I still think that's too much. Like, <laughs> I, it's just, it's, I get if they're doing like a telephoto, a wide and a normal or something, but it's just too many options. Like I was talking to some of my friends the other day about options. And when it comes to a lot of stuff, especially general consumers, they don't want 20 different options they want maybe two at the most three and that's not coming in the cameras because a lot of people aren't pulling out their cameras to you know take a professional picture they're taking out of their camera to capture at one moment and then leave so this thing has a lot of options and i don't know what this two cameras on the front thing is about because apparently the pixel has that too i don't know if that's just for like depth or what but it just seems weird to me but then again i never use my front facing camera so yeah, probably that that like what bokeh effect to make it everything in the foreground in focus, everything in the background out of focus. Uh, yeah. Josh, what do you, what do you think that third that third sensor is going to be for, man? Um, the third one on the back. Yeah, or yeah, on the back. Um, yeah, I, I don't know, like telephoto maybe. So you know, you have a few different options, which would be kind of cool because you know we kind of have to pick between the wide angle and telephoto. So maybe they're throwing the whole kitchen sink in there. I don't, I don't know. Um, and then probably what you guys said on the front, the bokeh stuff. Yeah. Kian, any ideas for the rear camera? Uh, just like I said, just thought it might be the normal telephoto and, and wide. That's the only thing I could think of that they would put on the phone. I mean, personally, I, mean, I want to see Predator Vision. I want to see that thermal, you know, with all the different colors <laughs> and stuff. I think that'd be sweet, personally, but that's that's just me because I'm crazy. Why do you need that? <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. It's not about what you need, man, okay? Why do you need a 6.2-inch screen with, like, a 5,000 pixel density, okay? Why do you need for, that? For the pixel. We're, we're, we're past need at this point. <laughs> exactly. This is, this is all gratuitous anyway. <laughs> 
Um, what what did it remind me? What the, um, was it? The P twenty that had three cameras. The P twenty Pro, yeah. So so what did it all use those cameras for? Uh, what's that? The P twenty Pro. <laughs> I don't have one. <laughs> I know they still have their like monochrome RGB, and I think it's another RGB. But let me look it up. I guess I'm just kind yeah. of, I guess I'm just kind of, kind of curious what it's like, what the benefit is, the, the tangible consumer benefit is for that third sensor. Like, is it going to be a, a dedicated zoom or, or what, you know? I mean, it has to be, they, I guess since cameras are becoming more popular for phones or it has been like the past, what, three years or so, they are just trying to make the camera, they're trying to make phones replace, you know, point and shoots, what they already have. And then also maybe take on DS DSLRs yeah. even though I don't think they can no I mean you, you can't you can't beat a uh, you can't beat a full size camera with this teeny tiny thing crammed inside a you know 10 millimeter thick phone it's just not going to happen um, there was that one phone didn't uh, was it like the light phone that had 16 cameras in it that's actual camera do you guys it's remember a, that yeah it's the light camera but it's actually it's not a phone it's, a, it's an actual camera Okay. It's just a cam- It's like the Galaxy cameras, how they used to be. So it's more like a oh. camera with, with phone functionality than a phone with camera functionality? Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. I mean, it, yeah, we're, I, we're kind, I, we're kind I of blurring mean, the line, too. I mean, what, 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 who's, who's making that definition these days is saying what, what exactly a phone is when phone functionality is, like, you know, the fourth or used. fifth <laughs> most that used <laughs> thing. <laughs> but well, yeah, yeah it, for the... Oh, I was going to say, for the P20 Pro, it has that 20 meg... Uh, mono sensor than the 40 meg RGB sensor and then the third camera is just for telephoto gotcha. and it's like super low res it's 8 meg 8 meg so uh, it's I don't know it's weird how they did it <laughs> that is weird yeah I, th- I think this is a trend that we're going to end up seeing because like you can't make the phones thicker and kind of turn them into you know like what dedicated cameras are so what can you do you can keep adding ca- camera modules and maybe combine them together to get like you know a, a super image somehow i don't know yeah well, we have red coming out with like the modules so maybe we can do that since motorola's not yeah we're gonna end up with a phone that has you know five notches and 36 sensors and you know like four <laughs> screens notches. or something <laughs> the whole back oh of gosh, the camera the the, i mean the whole back of the phone is just a lens exactly can't touch the back of it yep. <laughs> people can barely people can barely stand one notch imagine five <laughs> Okay, moving on from ridiculousness. Um, Google is rumored to have an a AI-powered health assistant in the works called Coach. Um, it's supposed to be similar to Google Assistant in that it learns your tendencies, things you need, uh, like when you need to drink water, when you need to take medication, uh, uh, nutrition reminders, when to eat, what to eat, how much to eat, because apparently we are incapable of doing that ourselves. <laughs> um, what do you guys think of that? Josh, why don't you lead us off here? Um, it's cool, and you know, Google kind of steps in, you know, all kinds of areas, and you know, being Google, you know, they think of clever and different, unique ways to to approach it rather than like you know, like the Fitbit and other like popular guys do. So, I, I'm interested to see um, what what they bring to the table. Um, you know, um, one of the cool things that I read there was you know that that the watch reminds you to like, for instance, like get a drink. Like like I have that problem where, you know, I'm so busy at work and, you know, I forget to drink water, which, you know, you should be all the time. Um, so that would be cool. Like little things like that, that we aren't already supplied um, by our wearables. Yeah, I, I'm sure they could they could come up with something useful. Kian, what do you think? Yeah, I agree. There's either an app out there or it might just be Apple's health thing in general. But they already there are apps out there that remind you to drink you know, consistently throughout the day. And that can be cool if it's built in to either a phone or a watch. Um, so, I mean, it seems like a cool way for, for Google to push fitness and health, especially in America, if they could, like, make it default somewhere. Yeah, you know, I have to ask, though. Like, you have Google Fit, which is 100% fitness-focused with no AI. You have Google Assistant, which is completely AI powered, no no fitness things, and now you have Coach, which kind of blends those two things. I mean, would Google just be better served integrating all three of those things into Assistant or something would, of that sort? 
I would hope that coach isn't a standalone thing and rather something built into fitness. I mean, Google Fit and Definitely. Assistant. But who knows what Google, they like to push out 18 I, things. They, they, they release like three three messaging platforms all at one time. You know what I mean? Yeah, they, they, so. they have what, Hangouts, Allo, and Duo all at the same time. And I wouldn't like... be surprised with <laughs> Google. That's not what we want. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm with you on that, Donovan. We don't, we don't need more. You don't need to add complication to it. Yeah. At this point, I'm surprised we don't have like Google Google Calendar, Google Agenda, and Google Reminders or something of that of that sort. <laughs> yeah. All oh, right. Reminders, reminders out there. <laughs> <laughs> a, a good one. Sorry, whatever the reminders thing is that they just put out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Moving on from that. Uh, well, we have more leaks from the Pixel Three. I don't know if you guys are tired of Google, uh, Pixel Three leaks. Yet. I know. I know. I kind of getting burnt out by it but this might be the leak to end all leaks uh we have <laughs> wireless charging camera samples uh how do we feel about knowing pretty much everything there is to know about a phone before the phone's even officially announced what do you think Ian? i actually hate rumors and leaks well not even rumors as much just because people say rumors and they can be anything like i don't know if any of you guys remember one of the iphones or maybe like several of them were supposed to have like the keyboard holograph from the side or something so i don't really mind rumors <laughs> because most of the time they're pretty dumb but i don't really like leaks because leaks ruin the excitement that i want to have when i watch google's little press conference in october so that's why i really don't like i now i pretty much know about the pixel 3 and you know, somebody somebody commented on another blog saying that now they have two months to re- you know not purchase a phone, and it's just like oh man, I just ruined all the excitement. Now Google has to come out and do something super amazing when originally they just had to come out with the phone, and I would have been super amazed. Yeah, I mean it almost feels like the phone is is already oh. <laughs> outdated. It's, it's almost already outdated, and it's not even announced yet. You know, uh, Josh, what do you think, man? Um, yeah, I agree with Kenyon. It's kind of like, um, you know, like a spoiler to a movie almost. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> what I really want, I want a company to, to troll everybody. And like when you actually see it as something completely different, like I would lo- like I've been waiting for that to happen. And I would love that. Um, in this case with the Pixel 3, like I, I kind of wish the notch wasn't like it was. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, it's a little overdone. Um but you know, I'm sure I'm sure people are kind of tired of hearing about the notch. Um, yeah, the, like when is this thing supposed? Like I, I don't remember October previous. Course. I don't remember previous pixels getting leaked as much as this one. There's uh, been no, they haven't not at this extent. I mean, everything's been leaking this year. Pretty much everything has been spoiled. There hasn't been a device that's been announced. They're like, whoa, this is oh hey, we're shocked. We're really surprised this this, this came out. No, it's yeah. more. Like, it's more like yeah. No, we we knew ahead of time. We we saw the, Which we is, saw the leaks. <laughs> it's kind of weird to me because I don't think general consumers really pay attention to all the leaks, and they pay attention to a lot of the rumors, which is why they think weird stuff is going to happen. But I don't think they pay a lot of attention to the leaks. And I'm I don't know. You guys, maybe you can correct me. I don't know whether the tech guys like the leaks or not. Because I like I said, I personally don't. But what about you guys? Do you guys like leaks at all? I mean, yes and no, because I, I, I crave knowledge and I absorb it. I like knowing these things, but at the same time, I would like to be surprised. I, I'd love, like, like, like you said, Josh, I would love to see Google be like, ah, gotcha. That was a fake. Yeah. Boom. This is our real phone. But yeah. that's not going to happen. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know why people keep putting out leaks. It's just like, let us enjoy the phone, man. <laughs> let us enjoy what the companies are going to do like even with samsung and everybody else yep well kind of related to the uh the topic we we hooked up with earlier with the uh with the three cameras on the on the v40 we have the the oppo r17 pro that's supposed to have two batteries and triple camera sensor on the back and kind of <laughs> kind of some craziness here let's uh <laughs> let's talk about how ridiculous phones are getting right now josh <laughs> how ridiculous is this thing um, I mean, the, like we mentioned before, the three camera thing, I think that's going to start becoming a trend. Um, but the two battery thing is what kind of stuck out to me the most. And I mean, it, it, it just doesn't make sense to me. Like, why, why two batteries instead of one big one? 
like uh, the article here said that both of the batteries are like 1800. They add up to, you know, whatever, 37, whatever milliamps. But like, how how is that better than just one big one? Like, for instance, the Note has a 4000 milliamp battery and it's just one um, one module. So I don't know. What, what do you guys think? Do you, do you think there's any benefit there? So I actually have what I think might be a decent hypothesis here for that. Okay. When you're charging a single battery, you're still limited by the amount of wattage and amperage you can push to that battery before it overheats, explodes, you know, etc. But with two different batteries, you could, in theory, push the same wattage and amperage you would to one battery to both of them, therefore charging them twice as fast. Does that, does that kind of jive with what you guys are thinking? Okay, so you think the selling point's going to be the fast charging? The fast charging, yeah. I don't, I don't think in terms of draining it'll have any benefit. I can't, I can't <laughs> think of any way, but then again, I'm not, I'm not paid to be a battery engineer. I can't think of any ways to that it would be. But better. don't phones already have like fast charging as long as you use whatever special charger they have they come with? They do, but Oppo claims that you're going to see upward of 50 watts charging power. Whereas, if I'm not mistaken, the high end for Qualcomm's uh, quick charging 4 Plus is like, is it, is it 15 watts? I think it was. Either way, it's not 50. It's a lot lower than that. Right. Um, Isn't this supposed to be the OnePlus 6 Plus 6S, 6 whatever? I, th- I think that was just the, re- the regular R17, which is not, oh, okay. which is not the Pro. Um, but, I mean, Oppo is... Oppo is the sister company to OnePlus, so we might see some of those features in the OnePlus 7, you know, next year. That might be the evolution of the dash charging, which they're not really going with that branding anymore, but it's still what it's called. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Um, one interesting thing, like, this phone did sound like a beast, but then it has something like a Snapdragon 600 series processor. I thought that that was a little weird. Yeah, it's like, what is that? Oh, it's a, it's a, it's the 710, right? Isn't, isn't it that new, that oh, new kind of mid, yeah, mid-range between the 8 and the 600? We, had, we hadn't really seen that, um, that processor yet, but it sounds interesting. It's a bunch of, bunch of modern features, but more like the speed of the 600s, which... Yes, uh, Snapdragon 710. Yeah. I'm I'm intrigued by it. I'm a processor guy, so I'm I'm really intrigued by the by the processors and and how they compare to, you know, the MediaTek's and the the Anards versus the 600s and all that stuff. So would the as far besides charging, would the battery have any? Would it do anything for the general customer? Like you're not going to notice two batteries, right? You're not going to notice one drain, and then you got to flip a switch or anything like that, right? Oh, I, I highly doubt it. I mean, they'd have to make it seamless. Otherwise, there's no reason. I mean, unless it comes with a notification in the bar. Oh, you know, battery one drain, switching over to backup battery or something like that. True. Yeah. It, yeah. Go ahead, Josh. It just doesn't make, like, unless the batteries are big, it just doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah, I think it, I think it revolves around the uh, the charging speed and not necessarily the um, the drain speed. Because it's still, it's still a 3700 milliamp battery, which isn't bad. 3700 is, is pretty solid size. It's bigger than the Note 6's, or not Note 6, the Note 9's. Hey, no, 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 4,000. Yeah, exactly, that's what I was saying. The Note what 9 4, has 300 yeah. more milliamps, so, like... Gotcha. So, like, why Like why? Why would you add, like, switching between batteries instead of just having one big one? <laughs> You're I think adding another step in the process. I think part of it, not all of it, but part of it is that phones kind of got stale, and then we did notch, and then we did dual, triple camera. So we're just moving on to like the next thing that people are doing for phones before we move on to whatever the next thing is going to be. So maybe Oppo is just coming out with the next thing, which is going to be two batteries in one phone. Yeah. I mean, again, I'm, I'm no engineer, but I think it might be similar to the idea of a uh, multi-core processor as opposed to a single-core processor. You get more th- more more uh, units doing smaller tasks rather than one unit doing really big tasks um mm-hmm. I, i'm again i'm not sure but it seems like that might have a correlation there and then there is the the charging thing which i'm, I'm pretty sure is is going to benefit from having two batteries <laughs> they should use that as their tagline r17 pro you get more of everything more batteries more <laughs> camera 
more everything. <laughs> more notches? Question mark. <laughs> no, just one. More and more. <laughs> um, I, 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 if you really think about it, like, like we're getting to that point where manufacturers are trying to squeeze like any inch of you know any upgrade that they can think of. I mean, who, who like who's asking for faster charging? I mean, it, I mean, I could use it. It'd be nice, but you know, it's not like on the top of my priority. But then what would they do? So we have to take all the things that you say, this would be convenient, and we have to start putting those into phones because otherwise we're just turning out similar phones every year, which we're kind of already doing. Yep. I mean, I know for me, dash charging on the OnePlus series phones is a game changer. I mean, my phone was at, you know, 30% at work because I was using it all day, uh, you know, setting up the, the posts for the podcast and whatnot. And I jumped in the car, threw it on the charger, ten minute a uh, ten minute travel home. It's back up to sixty five percent. Do you have dash charger in your car? Yeah, there's a there's there's a dash charger nice. for the for the yeah, which which is the best place to have dash charging by the way. Oh yeah, <laughs> easily. <laughs> and then I got thirty five percent in just under a ten minute drive. It's a it's a really good feature, and if you can get it like on a imagine, imagine dash charging on an external battery. I think that'd be amazing. Or like a wireless charger, that would be insane. Oh man, on a wireless charger? That, that, that's why OnePlus doesn't have wireless in its phones right now is because it can't meet, match those speeds and it really wants to. Or it's just lazy, guess, depending on who you ask. I mean, they, I guess they don't want to say, hey, we have wireless charging and dash charging, and then when you try wireless charging, it's like, why would I ever do this? Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, that'll wrap it up. Thanks for joining us today, guys. Uh... If you like what you heard today, please consider subscribing on Google Play Music, iTunes, Pocket Casts, or anywhere you can find podcasts. Please also be sure to head over to AndroidGuys.com and click the links for this podcast. Not only do we post the sources for all our stories, but you can also find out more information on our sponsor, Blue Microphones. If you like how we sound, you should head over to the post for this podcast to get a 20% discount code. We absolutely love our Blue Microphones, and we are not alone. Blue is an award-winning company and the driving force behind professional musicians, internet creators, and countless elite gaming teams and Twitch streamers. The Blue Yeti microphone, which is what we all use, is the internet's most popular microphone. For Keenan and Josh, I'm Donovan Jessica. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next time.